let's talk about magnification let's talk about magnification now uh, this was the last thing we discussed in the previous class but many of you, uh, ma many of you did not seem to understand. You cannot hear me, then please check your audio devices, check your connections, check your Wi-Fi, everything. I'm all set. So you, you please check your devices, okay? Uh, yeah, my volume and everything is maximum. Okay, and still, if you have are facing any problem, it's okay. You can uh, watch my recordings on my U U YouTube channel. Okay, so let me start. So um, magnification. Let's talk about magnification. Okay. Now I'll talk a, a little bit in detail today. Now, for example, just for the explanation purpose, let's suppose that this is the actual cell. Okay, this is my actual cell. I mean, actual cell is way smaller than this, but this is just for understanding purposes. So if, for example, this is the actual cell and this is the magnified image. By magnified image, I mean to say the diagrams that you see in your books. So, I mean, I mean, for example, this is a chloroplast, but chloroplast is not this big, right? This is a magnified image. So this is what I mean. By magnified image, means the diagram or the image that you see in your books. So th this is the actual cell, this is the picture in the book, okay? In easy language, okay. Now, I have to find out magnification. Now, for that, we need to understand what magnification means. It means how many times did I multiply the actual size to get the diagram in the book? How many times has been this actual size been multiplied? Can you please hold the camera for me? Uh, so how many times is the actual size multiplied to get the magnified image? Now, now uh, get me, get me a ruler, ruler. Now, if this is a cell, uh, and if we, you know, imagine a cell 3D, if an imagine a cell in a 3D uh, situation, it has thickness, height, length, everything. Now you can take any of the dimensions, any of the dimensions. If you have length available, take the length. If you have the diameter available, take the diameter. Whatever, you can take any dimension at all, okay? For example, in this case, now this is a circular cell. Just for explanation purposes, I took a simple circle and I took the diameter, okay? So if I enlarge this picture, if I enlarge this picture, you can see that the diameter of this is small actual cell. This is the actual cell. By the way, actual cell is way smaller than this, but this is just for example. Uh, so this is the diameter, which is one millimeter long, okay? And this, in the magnified image, this diameter is six centimeters, but I converted it into millimeters. And we did the conversions in the physics class. I hope you guys remember. 10 millimeters is equal to one centimeters. Okay, one centimeters. But because I want my final answer to be in millimeters, so I wrote down millimeters on the right side. And so six centimeters would be six multiplied by 10 divided by one. So that is 60 millimeters, right? So that's how I got 60 millimeters. So remember, uh, for Okay, so if we want to magnify, no. So if we want to magnify, uh, uh, we have to uh, make sure that the two lengths are given in the same units. The two lengths are given in the same units. Okay, one millimeter and 60 millimeters, actual size and magnified image. Okay, those participants who are sending unnecessary messages through the chat window will be removed from the meeting and they will not be able to join again. Okay, so kindly be careful. Okay, anybody misusing the chat window, it has been enabled after a long time, that participant will not be allowed to uh, attend, okay? Okay, so magnification is how many times an actual size has been multiplied to get the magnified image, or in other words, you can say that the magnification is the ratio between the magnified image and the actual size. It's the ratio between the magnified image and the actual size. And remember, whenever we are calculating a ratio, the two quantities that we are 
comparing should be in the same units. If they are in different units, you will have to convert one of them, okay? You can uh, convert either of them, okay? So uh, this is a little algebra here. I don't know if you guys have done this, but if you understand this equation, if you understand this equation, like A is magnification. I have given magnification a symbol A, okay? So A is my magnification. So actual size multiplied by this many times to give the magnified image. So how can I calculate magnification is I will shift this because I wanna find the value of this, right? So I will isolate it in algebra when you wanna find out the value of a variable, you isolate it. And how, I'm, uh, how am I gonna isolate it is I will shift the other uh, figure which is getting multiplied to the other side of the equation or the other side of the equal to sign and here it is getting multiplied. So here it will get divided because the operation changes. I know this is math. Uh, this is algebra, a little algebra. I don't know how, what other way I can explain you this, uh, but hopefully uh, it will make sense. And if not, you can re-listen to my video and then uh, read, uh, you know, uh, read out how to find out the uh, values of a variable and inshallah. And still, if you have question, you are most welcome to ask. So magnified image in 60 millimeters, right? It was 60 millimeters divided by one millimeters and I got 60. And notice that the units also get canceled. And so because magnification is a ratio of two quantities of the same units, therefore magnification itself does not have a unit. Okay, magnification itself does not have a unit, okay? So this is all about magnification. I hope you understood. Did you understand, Sidra? Okay, I don't have any questions regarding this for now and because I did not find any questions at the end of your chapter or in your book. So uh, we will move on, okay, to the structure of microscope. Now, what is a microscope? Did anybody did anybody read microscope? What does isolate mean? Uh, isolate just means like, you know, in this particular example, I am trying to find out the, like this value here is getting multiplied by actual size, right? Now, if, if I wanna find the value of this variable, this should be all alone on one side of the equation. This is what isolate means. Isolate means to make it alone, okay? So I have to get rid, I mean, I have to get rid of this because it is getting multiplied by this variable. If I wanna find out the value of this variable, this should be alone on one side of the equation. So, and when you change the sides of anything in an equation, the operation reverses. If it's getting multiplied, it's getting divided here, okay? Okay, this is the best I can do. Okay, let's move on to the structure of micro microscopes. Okay, do not ask me questions regarding topics that I have not covered yet. Okay, I, I will not entertain those questions. You can ask questions from what I have already covered. Okay, since now, since cells are too small and most of the bacteria, parasites, and our own cells uh, are not visible, uh, by our naked eyes, I mean, to our na na naked eyes. Now, what naked eyes means, eyes alone without any helping instrument. That's what naked eyes means. So we use an instrument called microscope, okay? Microscope, now let me introduce light microscope. Now there are two types of microscopes, okay? Refer to page eight of your book. There are two types of microscopes. At the top, you can see the light microscope. The reason why it's called light microscope is because it's using light. Here's the mirror. The light rays fall on this mirror, get reflected by the mirror to the upwards. The light get re reflected upwards, which helps or which enables us to see what is kept on the stage, the specimen. This is the electron microscope. Okay, this is the electron microscope. Now I will show you a better picture show you a better picture. Wait.
Okay, this is a simple microscope. So let's try to let's try to name the parts, name the different parts. Now this top part, which is labeled as the eyepiece lens, as the name suggests, we keep our I mean we keep our eyes on on top of it, and this enables us to visualize the specimen. Now, what is a specimen? Now, you will come across a lot of new terms, okay? And I will try to define each one of them one by one. Specimen is that thing that you are trying to look at through the microscope in easy language. Specimen is anything that you are keeping uh, under the microscope to be able to look at it. That's called a specimen. It can be any tissue, it can be, you know, bacteria, it can be anything. Okay, then this tube, which is right under the eyepiece lens. This tube is what keeps the eyepiece lens in its position so that it's easier for us to look at through the microscope, right? So there's no particular function of this tube except for uh, that it is uh, supporting the eyepiece lens. Now, what is a lens? What is a lens? Has anybody done any? Yes, Sidra wants to answer. Yes. Yes, please go ahead. It's okay, even if you're not sure. It's okay. It's we are a here. piece of glass which is on the... Yes. This, what do you call it? Uh, this eyepiece? Oh, not the, yeah, on the eyepiece, which allows us to see the object on the right. stage. Right. It's not necessarily a glass. It can be any transparent material. These days, we have even plastic, okay? Uh, so lens is any transparent material which will allow the light to pass through it and in the process it will either enlarge the image okay and in this case in microscopes it enlarges the images right okay so this is eyepiece lens this eyepiece lens magnifies an image uh, to 10 times. It magnifies the image 10 times. What does that mean? I just talked about magnification, meaning that it increases the actual size 10 times. So if the actual size, for example, is one millimeters, it will enlarge it to 10 millimeters, right? Right, so that's the function of eyepiece lens. Uh, it magnifies all the images 10 times, right? Now let's move downwards. Right under the tube, the thicker thing is called body. They have not, they have not labeled it, but it's called body, on which you have. Let me. I'm, I'm showing you in the video. This thing is called the body. This thing is called the body. Okay, and this circular part on from which you can see the three objective lenses is sticking out is called a nose, nose piece. It's called a nose piece. This is called the nose piece. This is called the nose piece and it rotates. It rotates and it's circular. Okay, and this is body. And these are the three objective lenses it's sticking out of the nose piece. In some microscopes, there are four objective lenses sticking out and in some there are only three, okay? Now, this part is the arm with the help of which we handle the microscope, with the help of which we hold the microscope. Then we have two knobs, but before I discuss the knobs, I'll discuss the objective lenses first. Now, we have either three or four types of objective lenses, okay? And they vary in their lens. Let me show you. They vary in their lens. Uh, one is the shortest, the other is a little, okay, these are lenses, this, these, these are how the lenses look from inside, okay, you can see that they are transparent material and they are allowing the light to pass through them, but of course the light bends as it passes through it. Remember refraction, you guys did refraction in physics, so refraction takes place here, which enlarges the image uh, within the microscopes. Okay, uh, so can you see the three objectives sticking out of the nose piece, the revolving nose piece? And you can see that one is the shortest, the second one is medium length, and the third one is the longest, right? Now, the 
Remember, length is directly proportional to their powers. So the one, the shortest one is the low power. Shortest one is the low power. Medium length is medium power and longest one is the highest power, okay? Now, what do we mean by low power? Low power means uh, multiplied by five times. Magnification five, uh, sorry, not five, four times. Magnification four times. The smallest lens multiplies four times. So remember, eyepiece was magnifying 10 times, right? So eyepiece is magnifying 10 times. And then if we are using the smallest one, it would be magnifying four times. So four into 10 is 40. So when you are looking at a specimen in low power, you are magnifying 40 times, okay? Now, if I ro rotate the nose piece and I bring the medium one uh, directly uh, above the specimen, the medium objective lens has a magnification of 10 times. So if I am using the medium length, very good job, Zidra. If I'm using the medium length objective lens, the eyepiece lens was magnifying 10 times. The medium length is magnifying 10 times. So 10 into 10 is 100 times total. Now, if I'm using the longest objective lens, okay, that is high power, its magnification is 40 times. So yeah, 40 times. So eyepiece lens is magnifying 10 times, and then this high power objective lens is magnifying 40 times, so together, 400 times, okay? And then some microscopes have a fourth one, which is even longer than this third one. It's called oil immersion. It's not included in your, uh, at your le level, so I will not talk about it. But if that is used, then we can have a, a total magnification of 1,000 times. That means the actual size can be multiplied 1,000 times in our uh, uh, micrograph, okay? So that's the maximum magnification we can get out of a light microscope 1,000 times, okay? Um, uh, let me see, then... Let's move on. So now I will talk about the coarse adjustment knobs and the uh, fine adjustment knobs. Now, what are the, the coarse adjustment knob as the name suggests? Let me, the coarse focus or the coarse adjustment knob is the bigger knob. Usually the fine adjustment knob is the smaller one. Can you see? The fine one is a smaller one. Now, as the name suggests, coarse, will give you a blurred image, but it is helpful in locating the specimen where exactly the specimen is. You can bring it at the center of your visual field. Right. Yes, and the coarse knob actually moves this stage. Can you see the stage, the rectangular flat thing on which we will keep our slide? Now, in a, in a while, I'll show you how a microscope is used, okay? Like this rectangular thing, this is a stage. You can see the two clips. The clips are used to hold the slide in place, right? That's the job of the clips. And yes, and so coarse focus, if you use the coarse focus knob, that will move the stage upwards and downwards, okay? So you gotta be careful with that, okay? Uh, be careful. Uh, and then fine focus, if you use the fine focus now, coarse focus is always used with low power objective lens. Coarse focus knob is used with uh, a low power objective lens. That means the shortest objective lens, right? And it only gives you the general shape of the cell, will give you a general idea how big is the cell and where exactly it is in your slide, but nothing more, more, more than that. If you want to see greater details, you will have to use the fine adjustment knob. The fine adjustment knob will give you the, the thickness of the boundary wall, uh, and it will uh, give you an idea of where the nucleus is. You can see the cytoplasm, you know, just a little idea of whether the cytoplasm is granular or not. And if the staining is good, you can, you can have an idea regarding the chloroplasts but nothing more than that. 
if you wanna uh, if you want greater details more than this then you will have to use electron microscope because light microscope just gives you this much okay so so coarse focus is only used with low uh, uh, in low power and fine focus is used with high power and remember when you are using high power that means the longest objective lens never ever i repeat myself never ever use the coarse adjustment knob when you are using high power objective lens because if you do as i told you the coarse adjustment knob will move the stage upwards and downwards and the high power objective lens is too long and it's too close to the slide it's too close to the specimen if you use the coarse adjustment knob the stage might move upwards crashing the slide against the objective lens and in the process will damage the objective lens and objective lens is really expensive these microscopes are expensive okay so now let me show you how to use now okay uh wait okay let me see okay so uh now let's uh let's do okay now you have this practical on page nine looking at plant cells and looking at animal cells right now let's do looking at animal cells first okay looking at animal cells and they have used cheek cells so we will be doing this cheek cell practical now i wish i could show you uh, using a uh, you know a stain and microscope slide and microscope itself but unfortunately i cannot so i got this video because it's important for you to actually see how these practicals are done let me first check the chat window if there are any valid questions what is the mirror at the bottom i just explained that the mirror is reflecting the light upwards towards the objective lens so that we can easily see the specimen can you tell the magnifying power of electron microscope i haven't started electron microscope yet okay uh ha, yes okay why does it have three objective lenses okay how does a light microscope work normal microscope and a light microscope what do you mean by normal microscope light microscope is the normal microscope how many lenses are in microscope uh there might be three there might be four uh and if you count eyepiece lens as well that makes them four and five okay okay those of you who are attending for the first time can refer to my youtube channel for my previous classes uh what are other lenses then light i don't understand what you were saying before okay okay i will not repeat for anybody people who are joining in late or they did not attend for any reason they will have to listen to my recordings okay that's what the recordings are for okay now let me move on to the cheek cell practical okay i will uh, turn on the video i'm sharing my screen and then i will explain you uh, how this practical is being done let me give you a little uh, let me give you a little outline of what's going on let me just give you a okay so uh, uh, we are using cheek cells this is page number 9 i don't know if this is yeah this is page number 9 so with the help of a toothpick we will scrape the inner surface of our cheeks with the help of a toothpick we will scrape the inner surface of our cheek and so we will grab some cheek cells okay and then uh we will introduce a drop of water on the microscope slide and then um uh wet the toothpick in that drop of water that will release the cheek cells into the water and then we can use iodine solution as a stain that will that will stain the cells uh and the cell wall i mean the cell membrane and the nucleus because this is an animal cell so there won't be any cell wall okay uh and then uh, we will uh cover it with the cover slip okay i will show you how a cover slip looks like you can see in the video 
And then uh, this, this, with the help of this mounted needle, we first bring the cover slip at a 45 degree angle to the slide. This is the slide. This is the cover slip. This is the slide. This is the cover slip. Okay, both of them are transparent. Okay, and this is a mounted needle. Okay, this here is the mounted needle. And so again, you can see that the cover slip is at a 45 angle to the slide. Okay, this is to remove the air bubbles. Okay, and then uh, the, co the cover slip will be used to cover the specimen. Okay, and if you want to get rid of the air bubbles, we use a paper towel. We use a paper towel or a tissue paper on one side of the cover slip to make the fluid flow under the cover slip and that will get rid of the air bubbles and so your specimen would be clearer, right? And it's not important to cover the whole thing with the stain. Even if you have, you know, more than half of the area covered by stain, that's more than enough, okay? And then you can visualize under the microscope now. What is upside down? So how do you straighten it? Don't rotate. Don't rotate. I don't want it. Okay, now I'm using um I am share sharing my screen. Okay, so this is the slide. You can see the slide. Okay, this is the cover slip. These are the toothpicks. Okay, and there is the stain. In this, um, in this particular video, they're using methylene blue instead of iodine. So yeah, you can use either of them. Okay, now he will scrape the inner surface of his cheeks with the help of this toothpick. And then he's introducing a drop of water onto the slide. Okay, and then he's using the toothpick to scrape the inner surface of his cheek wall. And then he will, he will rub the toothpick in the water to release all those cheek cells onto the slide. Okay, he's twisting the toothpick within the drop of water to drop the cheek cells. And now he use a cover slip to cover it and notice the, how he is holding the cover slip at a foot. Okay, yeah, he's just directly putting it on it. Okay. And then he will introduce a drop of a stain on one side of the cover slip. And with the help of the paper towel, he will make it travel across the cover slip to get rid of the air bubbles. Uh, Okay, now he'll make the sustain travel to the other end of the cover slip. And remember the difference between the slide and the cover slip. Cover slip is what's covering the specimen. Okay, now he's, he's dabbing with the help of the of paper towel. So this gets rid of the excess of the stain that you might have accidentally introduced, as well as it helps in getting rid of the air bubbles. And now it says you don't have to uh, cover the whole thing with the stain. If it's, if more than half of it is uh, co covered with the stain, it's more than enough. Okay. Okay, now the slide is ready. Now he'll observe it under a light microscope. Now this is a light microscope. Okay. Now see how he has, he is using the smallest objective lens first, the smallest of the one, the smallest, because that is the low power, okay? And you can see the two knobs on the side, the coarse adjustment and the fine adjustment, okay? He is uh, ro rotating the, uh, the tube and the eyepiece lens, okay? He turned on the light, okay? Because this is an electric microscope, okay? 
Now, now notice how he's using the smallest objective lens and with the smallest objective lens, he's using the coarse adjustment knob, not the fine one. And, and you can see the stage moving upwards. Did you see how the stage moved upwards? And now this is how cells will look under 40 times magnification, which is low power. Why 40? Because 10 times was the eyepiece lens and four times was the smallest objective lens. So 10 into 4, 40. So this is 40 times magnification, low power. Okay. Now he will observe it under medium, medium magnification, which is 100 times. Okay, so he will bring a few cells in the center of the field, the field that he can see through the eyepiece. Okay, now, if you have adjusted the low power well under medium power, you just need to change the lens and that's it. So this is 100 times magnification. So if you can see, this is a little clearer. That one was a little blurred. This is a little clearer. You can see the tiny nucleus at the center. Can you make out the tiny nucleus at the center? Yes, you can make out, you know, you can have a rough idea regarding the size of the cell. Okay, so now let's move on. Now he will observe under high power. Okay, high power that is 400 times. Now he's saying that when you're using the longest objective lens that is high power, never ever use the coarse adjustment knob because that might damage the objective lens, okay? Now he is showing you, no, this is the same. This is the medium power. Now he will focus on these few cells at the center. Okay, now he's moving the, the he not, now he's using the longest objective lens and this is the highest power into 400. Now, can you see now he focused those few cells? Okay, you can see that we can now have greater detail we can have a greater detail, we can see the nucleus, we can have a little idea regarding the cytoplasm, if it's granular or not, okay? We can make out the cell membrane a little bit, right? So this is the maximum you can get, okay? This is highest power. If you have a fourth oil immersion lens, that can give you greater details, okay? Okay. So, So uh, what he's saying is that if you did a good job of focusing under the course adjustment knob, you had never used course adjustment with high power. If you uh, focused under low power well enough, if you, when you move to the longest objective lens, all you have to do is rotate the fine adjustment knob until you can see clearly, right? And that's all, okay. So, Did you guys understand? Okay, did you guys understand? Okay, Maha Anis, I'm unmuting you. Maha? Yes, teacher. Yeah, uh, did you understand the video that I just showed? Yes. Yeah, did you see how he was using the light microscope? Yes. Okay, good, good, alhamdulillah. Yeah, okay, now let's move on to how to observe a plant cell, okay? How to use a plant, uh, how to uh, visualize a plant cell under the same light microscope. Now, again, I will share my screen and I will show you this other video. Now, this time we, are, we have taken a plant cell, okay? From the onion, okay? Now we will take one, a peel of the onion and we want the inner surface of that peel of onion, okay? We don't want the dry scale that covers the onion, but we want the inner surface. Let me give you a little a background of this practical. Now we will take one layer of the onion. We want the inner layer, okay? The inner layer would be single cell thick. It would be single cell thick, okay? We will take it out. We will snap the layer into two. Okay, we will uh, bend it inwards, okay? That will help us in uh, separating this inner layer, which is one cell thick. We will take it out with the help 
and uh, we will put that uh, layer on the slide okay again we will use some stain okay uh, in your book they have used iodine solution okay and then again in the same way we will use a cover slip to cover it okay get rid of the air bubbles and then we will visualize under the microscope so let's get started Okay. 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 Let's move on. Okay, so this is all the apparatus you need. Okay, let's move on. So, okay. Now she will cut the onions. She will take the inner surface of the peel. Of one of the peels. Okay, now she is cutting the onion. She will take one layer out. Now she'll snap this one layer inwards and will take out that inner layers, which is single cell thick. On the concave side, use the epidermis. Epidermis is the name, is the special name for that layer that we are gonna peel out. Yeah, see how she snapped inwards and now she is pulling away that small layer. Oh, I'm not sharing. Wait, 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 wait. I am sharing. Yes, I am. Yes, I am. Why not? Okay, let me check. Oh, I, I was not sharing my screen. Oh, I'm so sorry. Okay. Okay, I'm so sorry about that. Okay, let me replay this. So she's cutting this onion. Okay, she's cutting this onion. She will take one layer out and she will snap one of the layers and peel the single cell layer from the concave side. See, use the epidermis on the concave side. So we don't want the dry side, we want the inner side. Okay, so see how she snapped that layer inwards and now she's peeling away the, the epidermis which is on the inner side. This is single cell thick, meaning it is made up of uh, single cells, okay, joined together. So she uh, 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 dropped a drop of wa water and now she is placing that tissue onto this drop of water. And with the help of this, these razor blades, she is removing the excess of tissue because we don't want, want it. This much is enough. She will add in a few drops of water as well as a stain. And then Okay, yeah, she uh, co covered it with the help of cover slip. And okay, now this time she will use a stain. That one was without the stain. Again, you can see how she's peeling it out. Yeah, it's not that hard to do. You can easily do it provided you have the lab and the microscope and the stains. Okay, she's using toluidine blue. That's the name of a stain. Okay, now we use different stains depending upon which stain is better absorbed by the cell structures. Wait two minutes after adding stain so that the structures can absorb the stain well. Yeah, because this is a plant cell, so there is a cell wall which uh, hinders uh, the absorption of the stain. And therefore, uh, we have to wait for two minutes for the absorption to take place. Now, look at how she is removing the excess of the stain with the help of a paper towel. Okay, again, she's adding wa water drops and then she will cover it with a cover slip. Okay, and this light is ready to be seen under the microscope.
Okay. So this is how plant cells will look. Now the left side is 40 times magnification, which is low power, the shortest objective lens, the shortest one, which is unstained. That was unstained. Yeah, both of them are unstained. And, and the video will show the stained one as well. And the, the, right, the right image, the image on the right side is 100 times magnification, which is medium objective lens. So you can see the difference in the size of the cells. The size, on, the size of the cells on the right side, 100 times magnification is larger. You can make out a few nuclei as well, if you pay attention a little. Okay. Let's see the stained one. See, you can see the nucleus and the cell wall. I appreciate the nucleus and the cell wall. Now this is the stain, the one that was stained with toluidine blue, and this is 40 times magnification, meaning under low power, the smallest objective lens. You can see the cell walls, see the regular shape, right? A few nuclei, you can see if you pay attention. Yeah, this is the nucleus, this is the cell wall. Now this is 400 times, that means the highest magnification, the longest objective lens. Okay, this is the nucleus and this is the cell wall. This is 400 times magnification, longest objective lens. Okay, highest power. Okay, okie dokie. So I hope that was helpful. Okay, any questions? Is that, yes, that was the cell wall. Uh, human cells, exactly the same as animal cells. Oh, a fun. We, in the last class, we uh, differentiated between animal, oh, are human cells exactly same as animal cells? Yes, yes. And cells do differ according to their functions. In the next biology class, we will discuss specialized cells, how their structure is adapted to their functions, okay? Okay, yeah, leave the bridge wall, leave the bridge wall, okay? Okay, now let's talk about electron microscope. Now, if we want to get into the details uh, regarding the inside, regarding the inside of the cell, then we will have to, uh, we will have to use an electron microscope, okay? What is an electron microscope? I'll show you what an electron microscope looks like. Look at this. This is an electron microscope. Looks like a rocket to me. Can you see how big it is? How tall it is? Can you see that tube? Now, there, the, there's a beam of electron. Now, remember, in electron microscope, we don't use light. Okay, we do not use light. Instead, we use electrons. Remember, you did the atomic structure? So she is sitting at the bottom of this tube and the eyepiece lens and everything is at the bottom of this tube. And then there is a beam of electron, which is uh, falling from the top of the tube to the bottom, okay? Now you don't have to go into the details of how an electron microscope works because that is really complicated. Uh, but yeah, this, the thing that re releases electron is called an electron gun, okay? And then it is made to pass through this tube and at the bottom is a fluorescent screen and that electron beam, yeah, just like this, that these, this, this yellow thing is the electron beam. Now this electron beam is being released from the electron gun at the top of the tube and it will pass through the tube and it will fall on the fluorescent screen at the bottom, right? Now that will be converted into an image on computer screens. Look at the picture on page eight of your book. See how that man is using uh, the computer screens. See, so he is converting that image into a computer uh, image, you know? Yeah, in, into, into computer graphics. Now, this is how an electron micrograph looks like, okay? So we have, you know, black and white. This picture is black and white, uh, and this has to do with different amounts of electrons falling on the fluorescent screen. Now, electron microscope can give us a magnification up to 500,000 times. Okay, electron, um, electron microscope can give us magnification of up to 500,000 times. So we can get inside the organelles. Now this is an electron micrograph and they have colored it. Okay, so this is an electron micrograph inside a chloroplast. 
Now, under a light microscope, all we can get is the general shape of the cell, the boundary, the size, the shape, and that's it. But you cannot get inside the organelles or even inside the cell in detail. Okay, I'll show you a few electron micros, micrographs. So we discussed chloroplast and mitochondria in our last class, remember? Now ribosomes, I'm gonna introduce a new organelle, ribosome. Ribosomes are also organelles. What are organelles? Specialized structures within the cell which are responsible to perform specialized structures. Oh, sorry, specialized functions. Okay, ribosomes are found in the cytoplasm. Okay, and they are involved in making proteins. They're involved in making proteins. So remember this. Now I'm gonna show you electron micrographs. Electron micrographs. Okay. Okay. So these were cheek cells. These are cheek cells that you just saw in that video. These are cheek cells, so they have used toluidine blue stain here. These I've already showed you. Okay, let's move on. Yeah, <clears throat> yeah, the, this, the, this is an electron micrograph showing ribosomes inside the cells. So can you see the dark circular bead-like structures? Dark black bead-like structures. These are ribosomes and they are responsible for? For? making proteins, I just said. Yes, making proteins. Now, this is an electron micrograph inside mitochondria. Mitochondria, okay? And this is chloroplast given in your book, remember? Okay, now, a little question session at the end. Let me take your questions first. Let me see if you have any questions. Let me ch check the chat window. Are there microscopes more powerful than the electron microscope? Uh, not that I know of. Find out. And then if there is, let me know. Let everybody know. Yes, there are. Uh, Rahman Abid is asking, are there any other stains? Yes, there are a lot of stains out there. Uh, ribosomes. Yeah, read. Page 8. Read. Ribosomes are organelles which are responsible for making proteins for the cell. Okay. Is there a proton microscope? No, not that I have heard of, no. Is there a neutron microscope? No. Okay, what are electrons? Go and watch my YouTube channel video, okay? Anatomic structure. Okay, miss, we can't see your video. What is it? Okay, okay. Can you show 400 times unstained again, please? Okay, you can watch the recording, Javeria, okay? Uh, Okay, that's the best part of online teaching and when you're recording is that you can just go back and watch the recording. You don't have to repeat. Okay, so let's do a, a bit of labeling. What is part one? Okay, now shut. I want you to be honest with me. Shut your books. Okay, shut your books and let's revise this a little bit. Okay, let's see how much of it can we remember. Okay, it's okay to be wrong. You're not being marked or anything. It's just for revision. So shut your books, okay? Okay, and I'll unmute you. I'll unmute you. Okay. I'm okay. So now, uh, uh, la label part one for me. Uh, can we use coarse adjustment knob under the medium power lens? Yes, a little bit with care, but you shouldn't have. That's what I was saying. That And that's what that man was trying to explain in the video is that if you have done a good job of, of uh, adjusting under low power, you, would, you should not have to use coarse adjustment, but you might, and, and that's fine. You can, but do it with care. Make sure the objective lens is not crashing the slide, and but, uh, but not under high power, okay? Never ever under high power. Um, okay, so 
आई थी स्लैंड गुड जॉब अरिहा गुड जॉब साथ चिश्ती उर्वा उर्वा बिन मसूद नॉट ट्यूब ट्यूब इज नंबर टू नंबर वन इज आई थी स्लैंड ओके सो हु एवर सेट नंबर वन आई थी स्लैंड ऑल आर करेक्ट गुड जॉब टू टू इज उर्वा जस्ट मैं टू इज या टू इज या ओके उर्वा यू आर आंसरिंग टू ओके गुड जॉब Yes, two is tube. Very good, very good. Everybody is giving me correct answers. I like it. Okay, I hope you guys are not using the book. Okay, three, three course. is what? Yes, three is course knob. Okay, call it. Uh, what did they call in the book? Yes, course focus. Yeah, course knob. Okay, three. A uh, four is four is fine focus. Good job, good job. Everybody is pouring in uh, answers, and I love it. Okay, five is. the longest objective lens five is high power. high power lens you will call it high power so we have low power medium power high power so longest one would be high power lens okay then uh what is six clips good job good job very good job yes seven six is clip seven is stage good job very good eight is mirror good job so that's that did i miss any point i'm very happy with your performance and see chat window facilitates question answer question answering okay now so that's that if there is any question please go ahead and ask me okay uh teacher does gravel have cells what is gravel Oh, gravel! You mean the one that is used on the roads? Abdul Rahman. Okay, let I will give you a chance to ask orally. Uh, where are you, Abdul Rahman? Please raise your hand. I cannot see you, Abdul Rahman Saqib. Are you the one asking? Yes, Abdul Rahman. Are you asking something? Yes, did you? I was asking that gravel, like it's thing. It's a thing we studied in grade five that is used to uh, we used in a sample to separate in a separating materials. So I wondered if that uh, has um any cells. Oh, you mean to say gravel, which is used on the roads? Okay, I did not un completely understand your question. Uh, gravel. If you're talking about gravel, which is used on on the roads, then remember, cell is a basic unit of life. Remember what was cell? Remember the definition of cell. So living things only are made up of cells, not non-living things. So gravel is a stone, is a rock. It is not a living thing, so it cannot be made of cells. Oh, okay. no gravels are not made up of cells because gravel is a non living thing remember cell is a basic unit of life okay can we get a colored image from an electron microscope now the image that we get from electron microscopes are not that easy to see it's not like you know you get a picture and you can look at it no it's not like that it gets it needs further processing uh you know computerized processing and they the the computerized processing turns it into black and white and then colored okay so and then only uh, we can visualize it is everything made out of cell except for non living yes everything is made up of cells in except for viruses now viruses are somewhere in between living and non living the only thing that makes them living is that they multiply but they multiply only when they get inside the host body okay but they are not complete cells okay but yes the rest of every living organism is made up of cells i got everything except for coarse focus and fine focus what did you say about high power low power see coarse focus will just give you a blur idea it will give you a blurred image of the of the cells right it can only give you idea regarding its shape its size relative size and you know some idea about the space between the cells and that's about it 
But if you want greater detail, like, you know, the thickness of the wall, if you want to have a better look at nu the nucleus and the cytoplasm, then you got to use higher powers, okay? That's all you need to know at this level, okay? And then the longer the length of the objective lens, the higher its power, okay? Jazakallah khairan urwa. Okay, Zores, you, what are the most common stains? Iodine solution is a common stain. And then we have methylene blue. That's a common stain. Uh, and I cannot remember many, but yeah. Do stones have atoms? Everything. Everything is made up of atoms. Everything. Everything. We don't know of anything that is not made up of atoms. Okay, Zores, you are trying to ask something. I cannot find you in such a, okay, there I got you. Yes, I unmuted you. Yes. To us. Yes. As I, 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 I can't hear you. Is it tertiary single cell organism? Sorry? Is it tertiary single cell organism? Peter, can you type it down for me in the chat window? I can, yeah, what, what did you say? It's cytoplasm, I don't know. Yeah, please use the chat window. So that is easier for me. Please mute me. I have a question. Yeah, it is better to type in this chat window because sometimes I cannot understand you. You guys have a background. You guys have background noise. Uh, the, uh, the method for magnification, no, it is not in the book. It is not in the book, no. Uh, does the stain give a better image for the microscope? Yes, it stains because, you know, it makes the structures colored and it's easier for us to visualize colored things rather than uncolored things. Is Tarty grade a single fold organism? Is there anything made with cells except for animals and human see all the organisms like bacteria all these other organisms are all made up of cells except for viruses even non-living things are made up of atom yes of course everything is made up of atoms okay everything is made up of atoms is there any lens more than 400 yes there's oil immersion abdullah musawwar there's oil immersion which gives us um which gives us a total of 1000 magnification. So that must be 100 times. No, that must be. Okay, I don't know, 100 into 10,000. Okay. Okay, please, uh, Mohammed, on, please write in the chat window. Because see, I unmuted Zores, but I still couldn't understand. What is the maximum magnification of a light microscope? Maximum magnification is 1000 according to your book. Uh, where can we find the recordings of the classes? Please check the description in my, of my group, the WhatsApp group, the description. In the description, I have given the link for my YouTube channel and kindly follow the group for instructions uh, especially, you know, the schedule of classes, the PDF of the books and all that stuff. Okay. Does the, okay. Uh, no, the magnification method is not given in the book. You can listen to my recording again. Yes, viruses are smaller than cells. Yes, because viruses are just made up of proteins. That's it. They are simple, like sort of molecules, right? Bacteria, yes, Uzu, Imran, does bacteria have cells? Yes, bacteria are made up of cells, yes. Oh, viruses, single cellular organisms? No, viruses are not cells. Viruses are smaller than cells, okay? Viruses are not even completely living organisms. They do not have any cell wall. They do not have any cell membrane, okay? They do not have any of the organelles. And that is why they cannot reproduce on their own. And if they want to reproduce, they have to get inside the host cell. Barida Fatma, I have a question. What is the blue liquid? The blue liquid in the video was a blue stain called toluidine blue. 
and we use a stain so that for easy visibility of the structures. Okay, it's nine o'clock and I'm ending the meeting. Okay, if you have any questions, you can ask me uh, privately. Okay, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.